Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's my pleasure and privilege to uh, welcome you to this building, the Royal School of Mines, as Daniel has said. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit of history about who and what the Royal School of Mines is. Uh, the Royal School of Mines was founded as a, um, a separate college in 1851, uh, 112 years ago. Um, its original purpose was to train uh, engineers, particularly mining engineers, to, to send them out to the wild corners of the empire to uh, dig up the resources of the empire so they could be shipped back to the mother country. So basically the students here were, were uh, trained, as we've heard, in all sorts of things, not just um, <coughs> mining engineering, but a broad spectrum of engineering subjects and uh, geology and whatnot. The idea being that you, you had a, a broad uh, background so that you, if you were sent out to the middle of nowhere, you could actually had the skills to be able to start to look for a mine and uh, to look for the signs of mineralization for a mine and then to actually start to build a mine. So you had to be very self-sufficient and that's why the course was so broad in those days. And indeed has remained so. Mining engineering is still one of the broadest engineering degrees that one can get. So Imperial itself was founded, as I say, in 1851. Um, in 1906, if I remember my history correctly, uh, the Royal School of Mines was combined, amalgamated, together with the Royal College of Science and the City and Guilds College, which was, uh, in those days, was a sort of um, technical training college. Those three were amalgamated in the early part of the 20th century to form Imperial College. <clears throat> so those were the three constituent colleges of Imperial College. And up until the um, end of the 20th century, just at the turn of the, of the millennium more or less, those three colleges formed the kind of nucleus of, of Imperial College. Um, and. Uh, the college was governed, if you like. There were three deans, one of each college, um, and then there was the rector, who was the, the main uh, the figurehead of the college, and that was the kind of governing structure of the college. Uh, in around 2000, that was changed, and we, we changed into faculties, and um, so now we have faculty of engineering, faculty of medicine, etc. Um, and so the deans um, kind of dropped out of that system because you now have heads of faculties and so that's why I happened to be the last dean of the School of Mines. I was the last one after that the deans disappeared as a, as a, as a species within Imperial College. Um, <clears throat> I, I mentioned medicine in about uh, I think it was about 1980 something or other we took on St Mary's Paddington across the, across the, um, the uh, park here on the other side in, uh, in Paddington um, they became part of Imperial College, and so we had a little medical outpost, if you like, for a long time, for 20-odd years. And then in uh, the late uh, uh, 1990s, uh, we became, we, we am amalgamated with several other um, medical schools, and now we have a very big school of medicine here in Imperial College. In fact, half the, half the income of the college is actually uh, from the medical side, and the rest is from the engineering and uh, science sides. Um, <clears throat> this building that we're in now is the, is the Royal School of Mines. This was, uh, the foundation stone of this was laid by Edward VII in um, 1908, and the building has been here since. Um, <clears throat> and as we've heard, Jeff Coyle was a, a student here in the late 50s. Um, unfortunately, we no longer teach mining, although we call ourselves the Royal School of Mines still, for historical reasons. We had to give up the mining course um, about 10 years ago. Basically, through lack of students, uh, there weren't enough students to make a viable course, and of course, the universities were being pushed in those days to become more, uh, uh, more commercial, if you like, and so courses which couldn't bring in the money, not having enough students, were unfortunately given the chop. Um, and mining uh, was given the chop here in the about, I think our last mining students actually left here about 2003, about 10 years ago. Unfortunately, that was just at the beginning of the mining boom, you may all have heard, but 
<laughs> mining has actually been quite a boom over the past 10 years. It's, it's past the peak now and seems to be on the, on the downside again. But um, <clears throat> had we been able to stay in, in business for another five years or so, we probably would have had as many students as we could have coped with and uh, things would have been very different. But unfortunately, history is uh, uh, not like that. So we, we don't have any more mining students. We still have geology students and we still have what used to be called metallurgy, but now is called materials. <coughs> That's the, those two uh, departments, which were, there were three departments in the School of Mines. There was mining, metallurgy, and geology. Um, geology and metallurgy now materials are both survived and they're both doing very well. Mining, unfortunately, isn't. Um, just to, uh, we've heard about the breadth of mining. Mining, of course, is a very ancient um, profession. It's perhaps the second most ancient profession. We all know what the first one is. <coughs> um, I always used to tell the students, the new students coming in here, the old saying that if you can't grow it, you have to mine it. Everything around us is either grown or is taken out of the ground as by miners. Um, and of course, our archaeologists mark all the ages of man through the materials that we use. It starts with Stone Age, Copper Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. So it's been, the metals have been in the service of man for many, many uh, millennia. Um, and indeed, mining had one of the very first textbooks. Uh, it was actually in 1556. Um, a chap who styled himself Georgius Agricola. And for Latin scholars amongst you, you'll realize that means Farmer George. Um, he wrote a book called De Re Metallica, and that was a, um, a compilation of all the mining techniques, all the way through from geology, right the way through mining, um, the processing of the ore into metals, and indeed there's even something about the environment, the effects on of mining on the environment in this book. Um, the book, as I say, was first published in 1556 and remained in a few libraries around the world, rather unloved and unread. But in 1912, Herbert Hoover, who was the President of the United States, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly when he was President of the United States when he started, but basically before that he was a mining engineer. His wife was a Latin scholar, and between them they took De Re Metallica and translated it into English. And this book actually is a copy of one of the first editions of Hoover's uh, translation of De Re Metallica. It's got dozens of beautiful woodcuts in it, showing the various techniques that were in use in the, in the uh, 1500s in mining. It's a very uh, interesting book. This one is quite rare. It's actually signed by Hoover himself. Uh, it belongs to uh, Professor Jan Siliers, who's the head of, of this, uh, of the um, Department of Earth Science and Engineering, which is the department you're in here at the moment. So he's agreed for this to be put on show this afternoon, so I'll leave it on the table in the front here and perhaps join the break. You might like to have a look at it. It's quite an interesting uh, uh, book. So with that, I think I've used my allotted time. Can I just, uh, again, welcome you to the building? Uh, I hope you have a great meeting. I'm afraid I'm not a systems dynamicist myself but I shall uh, at least uh, hear a couple of lectures uh, and uh, with great interest. So uh, I hope it's a very successful meeting. Thank you very much.